Every year, UH Energy brings critical issues in energy to our annual symposium series. The second topic of the series is carbon tax. Is it the right time? With the Paris Climate Summit on the horizon, countries around the world are announcing their ambitions for reducing carbon emissions. Some are predicting that the participating countries will reach an international consensus on global price on carbon. But is a global price on carbon a good idea? How will it be executed in a way that is fair to low-income families and developing nations with rising energy needs? In this panel, our speakers will discuss the need for a price on carbon and tell us what that plan might look like if one were to be put in place. There are two major approaches to pricing carbon, cap and trade and carbon tax. Both methods make the assumption that putting a price on carbon will incentivize emitters to emit less. Under cap and trade, a government will set a limit on the quantity of carbon that can be emitted by a producer. If the producer stays under the limit, they will earn credits proportional to the deficit between the set limit and the actual reported quantity. They will then have the ability to trade those credits to other producers who may emit carbon over the limit. Producers who emit more than the limit can then purchase unused credits. Some of the world's largest oil and gas producers, including Royal Dutch Shell, BP, and Statoil support this model. China, as the leading emitter of total greenhouse gas emissions, is implementing a regional cap-and-trade program by 2017. The other option, imposing a carbon tax, places a price or tax on each ton of greenhouse gas emitted. The tax will gradually create a market response across an entire economy and create incentives for emitters to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, ultimately resulting in reduced emissions. Governments may find a carbon tax financially irresistible. The U.S. and many developed nations are still struggling with budget deficits and larger national debts due to the Great Recession. Imposing a uniform carbon tax, especially across all industrialized nations, would not be seen as favoring one economy over another. Some proposals for a carbon tax even aim to be revenue neutral, meaning money generated from a carbon tax would either be returned to the citizens or invested in renewable and less carbon-intensive energy production. Various developed countries, including Denmark, France, Iceland, Japan, and the United Kingdom, have introduced their own versions of a direct carbon tax, while Australia recently repealed their carbon tax under the direction of a new government and Prime Minister, Tony Abbott. In 2014, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or the IPCC, released their annual synthesis report, which provides a view of climate change. The report includes two key statements on observed changes and their causes. The IPCC concludes that human influence on the climate system is clear, and recent anthropogenic emissions of greenhouse gases are the highest in history. The atmosphere and ocean have warmed, and the amounts of snow and ice have diminished, and the sea level has risen. Additionally, President Barack Obama and the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, released the Clean Power Plan an action that establishes national standards to limit carbon pollution from power plants by 32% by 2030. The plan allows for states to develop procedures to meet those goals. Some states will choose to work toward energy efficiency and increasing renewable energy use. Others may invest in carbon capture technology or they may simply close and replace older carbon intensive power plants. All of these options will have associated costs that will be paid for by producers and consumers. Another possible strategy will be to put a price directly on carbon emissions. There are skeptics who disagree with the IPCC's conclusions regarding climate change and its anthropogenic origins, and further question the effectiveness of imposing a carbon price altogether. What if the U.S. moves to reduce carbon emissions and no one else follows? Will it be worth the exercise? Reducing carbon emissions will impose a cost on economic activity that has never before been seen, and that cost could stifle innovation, which according to some, is the best way to solve the issue of climate change. Other skeptics question the validity of the claim that human industrial activity is the largest contributing factor to global warming and argue that carbon dioxide emissions are needed to bolster plant life. We invite you to join us for a discussion that will begin to answer these questions on Tuesday, November 10th at 5.30 p.m. in the UH Student Center South Houston Room. The symposium will feature a panel of guest speakers including Aparna Matur, resident scholar in economic policy studies at the American Enterprise Institute, Robert R. Nordhaus, partner at Van Ness Feldman LLP, Marvin Odom, president of Shell Oil Company and Upstream America's director, and Leighton Stewart, 
geologist, environmentalist, author, and retired energy industry executive. Moderating the symposium is Dave Failing, energy and environment reporter for Houston Public Media. We look forward to a great discussion and hope to see you there.